Hello, comrades, and welcome back to Shanka Show. Здравствуйте, дорогие товарищи. My name is John Wayne Cheeseburger. Well, it sounds kind of weak. How about I am Captain Soviet Union? So today we're going to talk a little bit more about Soviet cars and Soviet license plates. You probably recognize this picture from my recent video, Happiest Day in the Life of the Soviet Family, Old Photo Analysis. So we're going to talk today more about license plates. You see, when I was a kid, I had this really strange uh, hobby. I like to write down and like collect unusual license plates of different cars in Kiev as well as in the village. This strange hobby lasted for quite a while uh, from probably when I was seven, when I started first grade in school and at least till I was 12 because the paper we're going to look at it today was made in 1983 when I turned 12. And this is the picture of me around that time, 1982-83, so I was around 11, 12, uh, taken with my friend uh, Dima. And it's taken in the village and my grandparents' house is right behind us and I'm armed and dangerous with that toy plastic rifle. And I just want to say again, I'm so lucky that my mother uh, kept a lot of my art projects and my school materials because of course when you're a kid you don't really care. And one of those, this document from 1983 that I'm going to show you today. Okay, here we go. So this is the cover of this uh, report. A uh, car license report, a brochure that I uh, drew when I was 12 in 1983. As I learned many years later, here in America they call it bubble letters, but it has a little 3D element going on. So it's not too bad for the 12-year-old, and especially considering that fact that I was lefty that got uh, forced to start writing and drawing with right hand and another interesting detail is looks like from way back i was already interested in english language like here it's everything russian words but i wrote them using uh, latin letters so it says here secretna which means uh, secret in russian and then there's abbreviation uh, rpom and you know i actually had to think really really hard to remember what that meant and it's разведка по машинам. So this is kind of like research uh, on cars or разведка is more like uh, scouting, uh, car scouting. And below we have a quite detailed uh, picture of the car and you could read it it's played. One, two, three, four, PSR. And there's a puff <laughs> for some reason. And there is an explosion above it. In the opposite side, I added with the small letters, Совершенно uh, секретно. So on the front cover it says секретно, which means a secret. And on the back in little letters, it's a top secret. Совершенно секретно. Most of this art was done with uh, ball pen. So I had a red, green, and regular blue ball pen. So it takes a while to color stuff with the ball pen. So I had no uh, markers or nothing like that. And you know, when I was in the village, this is what I did on the rainy days. We had no TV, my grandparents. Uh, so the only entertainment, if it's raining outside and nothing to do, is just uh, stay indoors and you color or you read books. And uh, so yeah, this is uh, thanks to the rainy days, that's art that I got. Okay, so let's take a look what we got inside. Uh, so this is the list of the different license plate um, that I collected during the whole summer of 1983. So it says on the top, Данные о года. Once again, cute bubble letters in 3D. Uh, below the numbers, it's uh, basically the address of the village, Черниговская область, Ещерский район, село Жовидь. Chernigo region, uh, Shorsky County, Village Rovid. And on the right side, it's kind of funny. There's one number, for some reason I wasn't sure, so I put проверить, to check it out. So I thought it would be kind of interesting to take a look uh, what type of vehicles and from which regions were driving through our village, which is like middle of nowhere, northern Ukraine. And it doesn't mean that I was chasing cars all day long, of course, you know, that will be when we walk on a, call it highway, uh, 
cross the highway, go to mushroom picking or go to the uh, downtown village to buy some bread. Maybe I see a car and like, oh, this is an unusual license plate and I'll write it down. I'll try to memorize. So that's how I collected those numbers during the whole summer. Okay, so let's take a quick look at the cars and the license plates in the Soviet Union, Northern Ukraine, summer of 1983. And just a quick reminder, uh, during my days in late 70s, early 80s, um, I've seen the license plates uh, like those on this picture, two on the bottom, a black license plate with white letters. And after 1980, more and more cars had the white license plate with the black lettering. I only saw one time the yellow license plate, like the one pictured here, and that was on the old motorcycle. So here, if you look at my list, I actually marked the new numbers. Uh, if you see this little frame, it means it was a new white number with black letters, otherwise it was a black number. So in 1983, three years after the new numbers were introduced, out of this 16 vehicles, only five had new license plates. So the first car I recorded was 4601 GST. I'm just gonna read, uh, spell it the Russian way. Ekaemka, color dark green. T3, it's actually Tiomna Zeloni. So I was recording model, and now I was recording the color of the vehicle. To tell you the truth, I do not remember why, when I was a kid, we used to call this vehicle Ekaemka, because this is UAZ, 452 and the popular nickname for this vehicle was Buhanka which because it looked just like this loaf of bread just really basic simple shape and as I mentioned look at the first two letters in any license plate in the Soviet Union you could tell uh, which region which uh, city or town uh, this vehicle is from so in this case we have GST, which means that this vehicle, this Buhanka, <laughs> uh, was from Gomil, uh, which is a town in neighboring Belarus, about 100 kilometers north. Next vehicle that I recorded was a truck, Zil, blue color, and I had a little comment that says Propan, which of course I don't remember from 1983. Maybe it was a propane tanker truck, or maybe it was instead of being on gasoline, it was running on propane, which you see that red tank, it's actually a propane tank. It's a propane tanker that runs on propane. So this truck license plate number was 5039CNR, which was probably the most popular type of license plate in the area because it was from Chernigo region, that's where that village was located. The actual town of Chernigo uh, was located 100 kilometers south from our village. So most vehicles around were a CHE N license plate. The next car that caught my attention was white Moskvich station wagon, license plate 0715 DPE, and it has a little frame around it, so that was a new white uh, license plate uh, type of 1980. The license plate tells us that this car came all the way from Dnepropetrovsk, which is uh, right now, the name is different, it's called Dnipro. It's the fourth biggest city in Ukraine and it's located 600 kilometers south from our village. Next car was red station wagon Zhiguli Vaz, license plate 2301 the OU and letters do you means that this car came all the way from Donetsk another large industrial city south Ukraine it's number five in Ukraine and it was located 800 kilometers south from the village next car I guess many people recognize was Niva white colored uh, as I said, that car was not that popular in the Soviet Union because it was so small, uh, really fuel inefficient uh, and expensive. Uh, license plate was 2902 Mayo. And it's interesting, the license plate Mayo actually means mine. I don't think they did it on purpose, but it's kind of funny. 
And this license plate means that the car came all the way from the capital of the Soviet Union and the capital of Russia, Moscow, Moskva. And it's about 650 kilometers northeast uh, from our village. And back in those days, during the Soviet Union days, borders were just the lines on the map. Uh, you could cross from Ukraine to Belarus or from Russia to Ukraine. There were no border patrols, nothing there. You just drive through like, oh, that was a Russia, now it's Ukraine. Next vehicle that caught my eye was kind of unusual. License plate 0494 Hun. And that was a dump truck, red color, Maz. And I just drew a picture of the dump truck bed to show that that was a dump truck. So MAZ uh, made in Minsk. But this is unusual because uh, this truck was far, far away from home. So the Han letters on the license plate tell us that this truck came all the way from Kharkov, which is second largest uh, city in Ukraine, and it's 500 kilometers southeast from uh, the area that I was hanging out with my friends. So this is interesting. What this dump truck doing so far away from its uh, registration place? If that would be maybe in August, maybe there was uh, guys making extra money. They just took a truckload of watermelons brought from south and were selling them around. Some people used to do it, but it's quite illegal because you using a state-owned vehicle for your private enterprises. So that's kind of this little mystery uh, dump truck from Kharkov in the northern Ukraine. Next car with unusual license plate was green color Vaz Zhiguli 4644 RVU. So there's another, this is kind of like a verb. I like to tear, it's to rvat, so that's like RVU. Uh, interesting. And RVU license plate means that the car came from Rovna, uh, it's Ukrainian town in the west, about 550 kilometers away. The next car that I noticed was 2222 GSE, white Volga. It's once again from Gomel, from the town in Belarus, but I guess I just noticed it because it's really cool, 2222. And of course Volga is, was the one of the nicest cars you can have in Soviet Union. Next car I noticed was 0921 VBF and it was a red Jiguli car. So Jigulis were quite popular vehicles, although in order to buy one you might have to wait nine years. But there were quite a few of them on the road. It was the most mass produced car in the Soviet Union. And according to the license plate, this car arrived all the way from Russian city of Voronezh, 600 kilometers east from my village. Honestly, I have no idea why I added two next vehicles uh, into this list, but you know, it happened 37 years ago, back in 1983. Uh, one is, uh, was a truck from Gomel, and one was local from Chernigov region, that's all the license plate. And that's the work trucks that every truck in our collective farm was this blue color gas truck. And actually, many years later, there were still like remnants of them laying around. And then people got poor, metal got more expensive, even those disappeared. But there's a picture of one, uh, someone dragged towards the lake and used it like a little fishing cabin so they could sit inside and fish right out of that uh, metal cab. There was another gauze uh, truck, blue, blue in color, but dark blue, uh, 7009 BRK. This truck came from our neighbors uh, from the town of Bryansk in Russia, about 300 kilometers northeast. Now, next one is interesting because when I lived in Kiev, I would never pay attention for this license plate because we had tons of those cars, but 0210 KHF was like, hey, this is our neighbors from Kiev region. So I was happy to uh, capture that number. So in Kiev, cars were KE, but the one surrounding area, uh, Kiev region, was KH, first two letters. So that's why they actually had a nickname the coffin number, because it sounds like you 
you cough and so you see the car say that's the yeah kashle shinomer so that's the guy from the key region Kehe. and there's interesting details so remember i was only 12 uh, that summer so this car that i uh, mentioned from key region i wrote lada i didn't write Zhiguli. i wrote lada so in my mind if the car it, on its front had four lights which was Zhiguli model 3 or model 6 we called them ladas so the other ones were Zhiguli but number model 3 and model 6 because they had those uh, double lights we called them ladas another instant uh, find was uh, this military Kamaz truck so that's a big uh, diesel truck number 2278 Desche and if you have uh, only two letters on the license plate, I told you that before, that means there was a military vehicle. Another interesting catch was uh, a bus from uh, Gomel, 7726 GSO. Icarus was manufactured in Hungary, and that was the most comfortable uh, diesel engine bus we had in the Soviet Union. We had them made specifically model for the, like a city bus, and one uh, to travel like, between cities like Greyhound bus. So that was uh, Icarus that was driving uh, past our village. Another bus that I captured was this uh, white and blue Laz uh, manufactured in Lviv, Western Ukraine. I hated this bus and actually described it uh, quite in detail in my book, American Diaries. We call it Dushagubka, like the soul. <laughs> killer um, and had of course no air conditioning it was rear engine gasoline truck with hardly any win uh, windows you can open and that was horrible it was very hot really cramped and this is what usually we used uh, this type of buses on the middle of nowhere uh, bus lines and very quickly let's take a look what other vehicles drove by in my village so we won't have this video too long and too boring i saw a gray color Zhiguli car all the way from karelia which is northern russia 1800 kilometers north there was another Zhiguli car from moldova now we used to say Mold moldavia and that's about 700 kilometers southwest there was another Laz bus all the way from Vinnytsia, which is about 500 kilometers south of our village. I saw a red Zhiguli car all the way from Odessa, south of Ukraine. Uh, this is the port that located on the shores of the Black Sea, 700 kilometers south. Another Zhiguli was from the Russian city of Smolensk, 400 kilometers north. And there was an orange Moskvich Moskovite uh, station wagon from Kherson, which is about 800 kilometers south, also south Ukraine. And I just want to add something about this document. I think it's quite impressive uh, for the 12-year-old kid uh, whose family never owned a car to be quite familiar with different brands. Like, I could recognize pretty much any Soviet vehicle. I mean, we didn't have a lot of our variety, but... I knew the difference between Gaz and Zeal. I could recognize Zhiguli from Moskvich. So I think it's pretty impressive <laughs> for a 12-year-old kid. And I asked my friend Bogdan, uh, he's the guy who helped me to put these videos together uh, to make this, you know, like there's a wind rose and this will be car rose. So the center is the village and it shows you all the different directions uh, where the cars came from okay comrades well thank you for being patient and uh, going through with me through this another long and boring video i hope you enjoyed the show and we'll talk to you soon До свидания. goodbye
Hey, by the way, the cool merch for cool comrades is available at the Ushanka store at teespring.com. Just a friendly reminder that my book American Diaries is available on Amazon.com or shoot me an email if you would like to have a signed copy. Thank you! And if you love my channel and would like to show your support, please click on the link below this video and become the patron of the Ushanka Show. For as little as one dollar you can help us grow and create the new interesting videos about the life and so